My name is Bemi Olatere Olagbegi and I am an under 40 CEO. The African Renaissance. The concept that the African people and nation shall overcome the current challenges confronting the continent and achieve cultural, scientific and economic renewal is here with young men and women taking the lead. Some call them the new school heroes. We call them under 40 CEOs. Surely there are challenges that both men and women face in business. However, I am keen to know whether or not Bemi has faced challenges in business brought about purely because of her femininity. Someone has started a business, is watching maybe six months in, mm -hmm. 12 months in, mm -hmm. um, and thinking, how do I run this business and you know, run it to profitability? How would you advise such a person? You just need to be disciplined. Mm -hmm. And I think that people like me who have their day jobs, you know, their regular jobs, and they start a business on the side, they tend to treat that business as a side hustle. Treat the business like you're not going to eat if you don't make money this month. Like you need to push it like the rent is due and you have to pay today. Mm -hmm. So people need to focus. And it's a lot of hard work. There have been times that, you know, I'm supposed to be doing inventory and I'm dozing. I wake up in the middle of the night like, oh, I fell asleep. And you get up and you continue. You have to do because mm -hmm. this is your this is your baby. This is your, your sweat. So you need to push it. And I... You know, you have to, yes, you can have competent staff and everything, but you need to be very vigilant and alert and make sure they're doing what they're supposed to do. Um, you need to, like I, when I said discipline, money. It's very easy to look, be like, ah, I've sold this, business, I've sold this, this, and this, all this money. Let me just buy a ticket and go to America. No, America will always be there. Put it back as much as possible. Put, put, put in as much as you can back into the business let it expand um, you might not be able to do it as fast as you want and sometimes you feel quote unquote i use the word tensioned by other people mm. and other businesses but if you know what you're doing and if you stick to what you stick to you know your principles i think that you do well even in a tough environment like nigeria so i know you're very well traveled um, mm. how has travel and interacting with different cultures you know added value to you and impacted your business I feel like you, you learn to interact with so many different people. You learn to respect other people's cultures and realize that not everybody is like you and not everybody operates the way you operate. And I'll give you an example. Um, I was supposed to send, I think, a balance of XYZ amount to a certain factory. They had finished uh, making a particular design. But sending money outside Nigeria too was also a bit of a hassle. So I told my shipping company who was that the guy stays in the country there and I said can you give them XYZ amount of money and when you bring my goods I'll just balance you they refused they said that's that's we don't do business that way I was very upset but a friend of mine said look just because you think it's convenient for you doesn't mean that it will work for them whether it's their personal principle or whether it's how they do business in their country you know I was mm -hmm. a bit like ah, to do for me now. Am I your customer? By the end of the day, you realize, like, look, just because you're willing to bend, the people in your in your vicinity are willing to bend about certain things, doesn't mean it works that way mm -hmm. in another um, in another region. So you learn how people do business. You learn so you learn how they reason, how they. There, there's so many things you learn, but I just feel like use it to your advantage. It means that you can blend in with anyone from anywhere at any time. Okay. You talked about, um, you mentioned sort of the unique challenges um, in the Nigerian you know, you know, markets. Um, but what would you say makes the business landscape in Nigeria unique? Five, ten years ago mm. um, in Nigeria, it was unusual for you to order something and it would deliver to you. Um, and I guess the e-commerce companies, the big ones that came in at the time, decided to, I guess, make themselves a little bit more credible by allowing Nigerians um, pay on delivery, for example, when ordering a product. Now, in other countries, unless you're ordering like food or pizza or something, you pay before mm. uh, they bring it to you. And in fact, in certain neighborhoods, they will not come there until you pay it <laughs> ahead of time. That, And I feel like eventually that paying on delivery thing will not it won't, it, won't be, it won't be on for too long, basically, because I feel like, first of all, as a business owner, you are risking 
your goods. Your goods have not been paid for. They take it, you give this delivery person who may or may not come back with your goods or mm. may tell you a story and say, the police stopped me. Uh, area boy stopped me. Mm -hmm. I had an accident, something of the other. Then there's the idea of uh, customers keeping uh, dispatch men for hours, mm -hmm. one hour, two hours, and this affects you know, other deliveries. There's so many different things. Um, there was a customer who wanted us to bring like five, six pairs of shoes to her house for her to try on one by one. And then she would pick which one she would. <laughs> in, you know, we don't do business like that. If I do that for all my customers, when will I move my... Do you understand what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So we did it the first time. I think it was the very first time. She, she had never bought from us before, and it was our first year. We're still rookies in the business. We did it for her the first time. And my reasoning was, by the time she figures out... Her excuse that she didn't know her size. By the time she figures out her size, when she wants to buy other shoes from us, she would just pick her size and would just deliver. The next set of shoes came in, and she wanted us to do the same thing. And we told her, sorry, Ma, we can't. You know your size now in Bimisoke shoes, so this is what we have to offer. So pick the color you want, pay, and we deliver. She was so upset. She went to our Instagram page, wrote like uh, paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs, insults and curses, and I was just like, really? And the funny thing about it is, in this day and age of calling out people on social media, some blog just picks it up. They don't know the genesis of what happened. They don't know, they understand. Mm. So there are unique issues like that with the Nigerian factor. They, they, Nigerians expect a lot for so little. They are mm. very, um, they feel like they're entitled. Entitled, yes. Yeah. Sometimes mm. they feel like they're just, they deserve everything. <laughs> you know. And then you think about it, for example, like you said, someone who's well-traveled, you won't do this. You can't be in the US or the UK or wherever and tell some shoe company, bring me 10 pairs of shoes in my house without paying. Let me try on first and select like tomatoes. <laughs> you know, certain things, yeah. Okay. So tell me, will you ever leave um, media and broadcasting, uh, you know, to expand your business? Yes, eventually. That's the plan. Um, but even if I leave, I won't leave Totally. I have two degrees mm. in this, for goodness sake. I went to school or no. I mean, mm. event, there'll be some way or some. I, I absolutely love the media. I absolutely love pop culture. Love, you know, I love the industry. So I, even if I leave, it, I'll, there'll be something. I'll be tied to it in one way or the other, somehow. This is Under 40 CEOs. So over the years, there's been a lot of, you know, recognitions, awards, nods, accolades. Accolades. <laughs> <laughs> you deserve them. Mm. <laughs> Over the years, what, what do these um, truly mean to you? I, I, can I just say that in the beginning, um, mm. before there were awards all over the place, I, I think like the first few awards that I received really meant, you know, the most to me. I was like, okay, well, and this was before the era of social media. This was the era where you were truly recognized for your work and not necessarily, you're not popular just because you have so many followers on social media, whatever. This was the era of, there were no blogs. I think I treasure those awards more than mm. you know, the, the later ones. I'm not saying I don't appreciate it. It feels good to be recognized for your work. But I feel now that nowadays, because of how big social media is, mm -hmm. I feel that people get, because you see a person often, and you know, they post a lot of pictures, or they have a lot of followers, or they're doing, they appear to be doing stuff, doesn't mean they're doing anything. Mm. You can build a, you know, you can, you can do a lot with smoke and mirrors on social media. Mm -hmm. You just have to give people a perception mm -hmm. that X, Y, Z is happening. Mm -hmm. I can make you feel that I've bought a private jet now, mm -hmm. but I don't own a private jet, and I don't have okay. the energy for that. Yeah. That also is a lot of work, by the way, mm. you know, to just create this fantasy in people's minds about you and so I feel that sometimes people then mix it up with oh this person is popular versus oh this person is actually good at their job mm -hmm. so yeah okay so I've also seen some vacation images of you on the beach you know tell me how do you <laughs> typically unwind <sighs> on the, I try to go away at least once a year or twice a year um, I feel like look you have only one life and if you spend all your youth 
every part of your of your time as a young person working you're going to wake up one day and regret that you didn't live a little bit um, i'm not saying you should travel all the time and you don't have to travel to have a good time but i feel like i work hard why can't i play hard pretty much so um on a regular though i love to like a normal day to day once i get home i love to watch trash tv i love love and hip-hop love those <laughs> ratchet reality TV shows that just we would just sit there and laugh. Because those women just make me laugh, like, oh my god, these people. And that's, that's how I unwind, mm -hmm. um, just hanging out with friends and just chilling and just relaxing. Um, I go out because most of the time it's tied to my job. Um, either I have to be at some event to actually see what's happening. Because yes, you can sit down on the internet and read what happened at such events, but sometimes you have to be there to know the real tea. So I can put on the mic the next day and be like, let me tell you what, what happened. Really happened. <laughs> what had happened was I was there. You know, so that's going out most of the time is work. Mm. Uh, so I unwind by just relaxing, uh, hanging out with friends and watching my ratchet TV shows. Okay. <laughs> this is Under 40 CEOs. All right, let's talk about your leadership style. How would you describe it? I think I am, I don't have a word for it, but I think I'm very straightforward. I, you know, I try to explain to people, this is what we need to achieve as a team. And I need you to do this, need you to do this, need you to do this, and you must do it well. If you don't do it, if you don't understand what's happening, you might, you know, ask questions. And if you still don't do it well, then that's when there's going to be drama. Mm. Um, I became program director for Nigeria FM at 27. I was pretty much the youngest program director in the country and probably one of the only female. And here I was, I was thrown into the position, really, let's be honest. Shout out to uh, my boss, Mr. Chris Obosi. He just called me one day and goes, so yes, you're going to be program director for Nigeria FM. You're also going to be part-time. Um, you're also going to be assistant program director for Beat FM. Boom. Congrats. Bye. <laughs> and I was like, OK. Um, so it was quite an experience. I mean, here I was heading a team of almost 20 people. I was probably the youngest. Um, and it was quite tough because they were not used to being told what to do by this small, small girl. girl. And I would say to them, if you don't want to take orders from this small girl, bye. I won't disrespect you, but you will do your job. And you will do a good job, or else, bye. You know, so some didn't like it, but I feel like you just need to. And then, you know, because of the society we are in, people feel like, as a woman, you need to pacify people to do their jobs. I'm not going to beg you to do your job. I do my job, you will do your job. And I give an example. I, I'm just like, look, um, I try not to call in sick. You're a human being, you're not a robot. But I feel like, unless I feel like I absolutely cannot, do you understand? I cannot come in, then, uh, you know, that's when. And I, I, even when I call in sick, I feel bad. There were, there were a couple of years that I would tell the HR person, please check. I didn't call in sick this year. Check it. Not because I was feeling great, or not because I was in a great mood all the time, but because I knew that I have a job to do. I take my job very seriously. I take it like it's mine. I take it like, because I feel like if you can't do the job that you were hired to do, you cannot handle much in life, you know, as, as an adult. And, you know, just, I had some issues, but I feel like you have to be firm. You have to make sure people do their jobs. And it's not a, it's not a matter of being wicked, because trust, I was called all sorts of things at the end of the day, but you have to do your job. If you are going to be written up for something, I'd have proof. Mm. I had a staff member who would call in sick every, every week. Wow. My stomach is pinning me today. I have a headache tomorrow. I'm in Ikuma. Just for, no, seriously, and then the funny, Actually called and like, I'm actually in a coma right now. No, that, 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 that's happened. Somebody speak, I'm in a coma right now. Really? <laughs> Do you know what a coma is? You know, I mean, so if, if you're going to discipline a, a member of staff, for example, you have what they call your receipts. So I pulled up emails, over 30. Wow. This is you. Do you have a terminal illness? Is there something you need to tell us? Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Like, it's not even a joke. Like, if there's something that's really affecting your health that we need to know as an organization, how can we assist you? But if not, you need to fix up. 
you know. So I'm, I think I'm more of like, and, and I'm also the sort of leader who would not just tell you, go and do something. You'd see me working as well. So you know that I'm not just giving you orders. I'm actually doing as well. So that's my leadership style. Um, I quit the job June of last year because um, I decided that I had done it for six years and I felt like it was time to focus my energy on other things. So I did that. So tell me about your failures or failings as a leader, if you have them. I think that um, as a leader, I learned to be a little bit more emotionally intelligent. I am thoroughly probably one of the le least sentimental people you would meet. There's no pity party about it. Do your job, do what I ask you to do. And then I, was, I had to learn about emotional intelligence. There are certain mm -hmm. people, not everybody receives what you say the same way. I could tell you, this is the job, this is what you need to do. But somebody else has perceived it as me being harsh or me being mm -hmm. abrasive. Mm -hmm. So I realized that you have to also pay attention to the personality types of the people that you are leading. Mm -hmm. There are some people that respond to, we need to get this done, please get it done. We need, and there's some people who respond to maybe tough love. Mm -hmm. You have to kind of be on their case. So you, I learned that I had to remember that these are human beings as well and you have to kind of study them and also notice who has what strengths and who has what weaknesses. And so it wasn't just a case of, I actually do this, you didn't do this. What if that's their weakness and they can't do it, but they will excel in another Mm -hmm. uh, task. Yes. Yeah. So emotional intelligence is something I had to learn. I was forced to learn that. So tell me about the values that are important to you and to your firm. Integrity is definitely one that is, um, no matter how smart or talented an individual is, I think that you have to have integrity. Um, there are many cases where you would be, you'd have opportunities to, to be disloyal basically to the establishment that you work with and you know make a little shifty change on the side or but I think as a human being you have to realize that you need to have integrity because that is 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 priceless my dad used to say this all the time like oh he put in a different way he'd say a good name is better than blah 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 I feel like and I, I understand what he means and I feel like as a as an individual if you have integrity you put in your your best efforts into your job. You know, you'd put in your, you, you, you'd do your job with pride, regardless of whatever your job is, whether you are a CEO, or whether you are assigned to sweep floors every day. Uh, and I feel that when people put their best foot forward at a job, it's, it's, it grows the company. If the company is growing, you're gonna grow. You're going to have access to better benefits, better pay, you, especially if you have a boss that is, uh, that is just. You know, so I think integrity is the number one thing uh, for me. You have to work hard. You can't. <laughs> the work is not going to do itself. Work mm -hmm. hard and work smart. Mm -hmm. So tell me, what's the biggest letdown you've had in your career so far? Nowadays, again, it's all about hits. It's all about numbers. It's all about for social media. So I feel like sometimes you could say something. Anybody could say anything, and I feel like any media house, or blog, or whatever could twist your words into something else and you know it's 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 a bit at the end of the day that's why it goes back to integrity you you start to look at especially if you know the person behind maybe the publication or the blog or um the media house it's kind of like wow you really twisted my words as clickbait so that you could get more and more so that's a bit and i think that i also had to learn not to expect too much from people because you never know what people would do for their own personal gain. Mm. So I could sit here and decide, this colleague of mine has said X, Y, Z about something and decide to paint it in a way that makes that person look like a villain or makes mm. that, or you know that that person is an easy target for mm -hmm. trolls or whatever it is mm. nowadays. So I think, I think my biggest letdowns are people and expecting Putting people on a pedestal, like, oh, this person's a professional and they won't do X, Y, Z for this, shame. You'd be shocked mm. <laughs> what people would do. This is Under 40 CEOs. Baby is obviously more emotionally intelligent since taking on leadership roles and values integrity above other key values. However, we are keen to know 
more about her lifestyle and fashion choices, her role models, amongst other things. All right, let's move on to more exciting stuff. So I have a few <laughs> quick fire questions okay, for you. Okay. What do you love to eat? Pasta. How would you describe your fashion style? I want to be a tomboy today. Today I want to dress like I live in Paris. The next day I want to dress like I'm from New York. So it's all over the place. Okay. So what are your favorite brands to wear? The high streets brands are more for me. All right. So what other CEOs do you currently look up to? I learn from uh, friends of mine like uh, Toju Foye, April Baikumbi. I also admire Tafo. We have Ade Kunle, Steve Babaiko. These are people who have been open and are kind enough to answer my questions about, or I run things by them. Even my, I had Mr. Babaiko, for example, look at my logo before, you know, deciding, oh, this is the logo. Or, you know, speaking to Mr. Ayane about how to go about a certain thing, or, so there are so many different people. Um, Mr. Chris Obosi as well, um, he's been my boss for, a long time <laughs> and you know if you, he definitely advises you know in his own way advices and I can ask questions as well so these are people that and they're working living in Nigeria they've dealt with so many different things so they're able to share from their own experiences as CEOs All right. so what's your favorite car to drive the Wrangler Jeeps so what's your favorite travel destination I like Miami your favorite book of all time I'll say for right now uh, Black Privilege by Charlemagne the popular radio uh, host in New York okay so what book are you reading right now? Right now, I am in the middle of Taraji P. Henson's book. And so lastly, I'd like to know, Benny, what makes you happy? Peace of mind. I think that you can't put a price on peace of mind. You might not have everything you want. Mm. You know, I'm not the billionaire that I want to be right now, but I think that when you have peace of mind, when you know that, you know, things are in place, things are working, when you have the support of family and friends, that's what makes me happy. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you for coming on Under Thank 40 you. Series, baby. Thank you very much.